I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, November 15th. Um, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, signed by the governor on February 15th of 2022, I announced that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. No hands raised, excellent. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. All right, we're gonna start off right away with the tax classification hearing. We have uh, Dan here. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, and Jeff Mesh. Hi. The assessor. The yeah, yeah. All right. Oh yeah, you gotta share your screen. Okay. Good job over Jack. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, the FY24 classification hearing. Uh, before we begin, a few facts. Our tax levy for this year is $14,442,399. That's the levy limit. The actual tax levy would, with a single rate will be $14,440,533. The difference between the two is a fraction of a penny that we can't raise on the tax rate. So the highest rate, the rate could be is eleven thirty nine dollars with a single rate. Uh, last year, our total residential value was $834,468,000. This year, it is $873,961,000, an increase of 4.73%. The 23 commercial, industrial, and personal value was $376,177,000. For 24, it's increased to 393 863, 865, an increase of 4.70%. So it's relatively a stable increase in both classes or all five classes. The average single family home last year was 418,000. This year, it's gonna be 439,600. That's just under a 5% increase in the single family homes. Multifamily and uh, two family and three family went up approximately about the same. Lance is gonna stay where it was at the same assessment. The average bill last year was 4833. This year with a single rate, the average bill will be 5007. If a single rate is adopted, it will be 1139 for all classes of property. Please note that splitting the rate does not increase revenue for the town of Hadley. It just reallocates how it's raised. Uh, the assessor's recommendations. <laughs> The assessors this year, like in the past, are recommending no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. And the board is also recommending keeping a single tax rate for all classes of property, the same as we did last year. Each year, the board must vote how to allocate the tax levy. And this is done through the selection of a residential factor, the selection of an open space discount, the granting of a residential exemption and the granting of a small commercial exemption. The history of the split tax rate. The split tax rate originated when Prop, Prop 2 and a half was adopted in 1980. In 82, it, it required that all assessments be brought up to full and fair cash value. Prior to 82, a lot of communities would have a tax commercial and industrial at full value and residential property at just a fraction of their full value. So what this caused is commercial and industrial properties were, were paying much more of the tax levy than they should have. When two and a half went into effect, the residential tax burden in large communities skyrocketed and <clears throat> many politicians worried that they wouldn't get reelected if people's taxes tripled or quadrupled over the course of one year. So they passed special legislation allowing select boards and city councils to allocate the tax rate to split it between commercial and industrial at a higher rate than residential. Uh, here's a brief slide showing our levy limit for this year. Last year's limit was 
53. We added 323,000, which is the two and a half percent that we're allowed to each year. Our new growth, which is the taxes that would have been paid last year for property that was added new to the tax rolls this year, is 138,202. Our levy subtotal for this year is 13,415,194. We have debt exclusions of 863,212, and there's a water sewer debt exclusion for 163,993 for a total of 14,442,399. The levy stealing, which is what we would collect in taxes if the tax rate was $25, is $31,695,639. Dan, can I just clarify a yep. question? Um, for the debt exclusions, those are existing already. Those voted are debt existing exclusions. debt exclusions. That's the amount of <clears throat> debt payments that we're making this fiscal year. Right. So it doesn't include the two. It articles. wouldn't include those wouldn't pop up until a year after they're borrowed. OK. Thank or you. six months after they're borrowed, which won't be until at least spring. So it'd be next fall. Uh, the levy ceiling is the maximum levy that the levy limit could reach. We can only go up. As I stated before, the fourteen million four hundred forty-two thousand. This slide shows the assessed value broken down of everything in town, broken down by class. Basically, to summarize, real property is at one billion two hundred twenty-four million. Personal property is just over forty-three million, and the total assessed value one billion two hundred sixty-seven million. 625,000 and change. The minimum residential factor is the lowest percentage that the residential and open space classes can pay of the levy. For 2024, our minimum residential factor, factor is 77.4667%. The select board tonight will need to adopt a factor between 1.0 and 0.774667. A factor of 1.0 will have a single tax rate of 1139 for all classes, and a factor of 0.77467 would decrease residential taxes by 22.5% and would increase taxes on all commercial properties by 50%, with a few exceptions that we'll cover in a couple slides. Uh, this shows the residential and open space percentage of value versus the commercial, industrial, and personal property. And you can see 24 to 23, it's virtually the same, 68.93 versus 68.92. Last year, it was 69.32 for residential. Uh, the year before COVID was fiscal 21, was 66.48. We've traditionally been between 65 and 66% over the last 15 years. It's a little higher than it has been normally, but it's it's starting to trend downward. And with I expect next year the commercial and industrial to, to take a big tick up because we've got some large commercial projects coming in. And that'll add another too early to say how much, but two large tax bills in there, which will probably bump that back up into the 33% range. <clears throat> Uh, this slide shows last year's tax bills for area communities. Our bill is where are we? right here. The average is 4833, or the average house. If you look at the, the figures here, uh, we are lower than all the other communities that have a single rate. It's close to Hatfield. East Hampton is close. Uh, Sunderland, actually, we're a little bit under Sunderland. But if you look at the communities that have a split rate, Westfield, they're still higher. Uh, Holyoke, Chicopee, and Springfield are below. But I added another column here on this chart, which shows if they had a single tax rate, what the tax bill would be. So looking at it, we have, I know people who live in town don't think we have low taxes, but our taxes are relatively lower than everybody else, mm -hmm. with the exception of Chicopee and Springfield, we've got the lowest out of these 13 on this list. This chart shows the last three fiscal years, the average value, residential went from 366.8 to 
two years ago to 418 last year to 439.6 this year. It's basically a 12% increase over the three years. Commercial, it went from 686 to 812 to 847, which it took a drop in 22. Uh, but over those years, it's only gone up 4.48%, the average commercial bill from fiscal 21. These are split rate options. This column here represent what the commercial rate or the residential rate would be if you adopted this factor for residential and what the commercial rate would be here. Basically at 50%, you'd be increasing commercial by 50% in taxes. Residential would go down about 22 and a half. Uh, there's an additional option. If you choose to split the rate, chapter land is considered commercial property. And if you split the rate, the chapter land would be taxed at a higher tax rate. So you can actually put it into the open space class and that would keep it at the residential rate. But any farm parcel that's not in chapter would be taxed at the higher rate. This slide gives two examples. The first non-chapter parcel is a two and a half acre parcel that couldn't be in chapter unless it was adjacent to another parcel owned by the same person in chapter. That would be assessed at 143.2. Their tax bill with a single rate would be 1631. With a 10% shift, it would be 1794. They'd go up $163. A five acre parcel in chapter, their assessment for this year is 5,500. They would pay 6265. With a 10% shift, it would drop to 59.84 or go down a little less than three bucks. Some other options that you have to decide is open space discount. You can grant up to a 25% discount on open space. We don't have any parcels classified as open space. We haven't, I want to say, since at least 2010, if not earlier. Most communities don't have anything classified as open space. Uh, the residential exemption, you have an option of granting a 35% discount to all owner-occupied residential properties in Hadley. It's 35% of the, the average residential value. So it would actually take $141,000 off of the average, off of the property assessment. So basically what happens with this is any house that's valued at 543,400 or higher would pay more in taxes because the tax rate would actually increase Uh, the tax rate for the residential class would increase from <clears throat> uh, it would increase up to fifteen dollars and thirty seven cents. So any house that's valued at five forty three four or higher would pay more in taxes. So an owner the average owner occupied home at four thirty nine six, if you granted the discount, would go down four hundred and twenty four dollars. But the same home that's not that's rented out, they would go up seventeen hundred and forty nine dollars a year. Dan, how many? Just your number. How many residential properties in Hadley? Uh, let's go back a couple slides. Oops, too far. Uh, that this slide here, the one hundred and one, it has it where there's sixteen hundred and ninety two single family homes. Mm -hmm. There's 35 condo units. All of those are on green lights. Uh, uh, East Commons. All the green leaves, green leaves are apartments. That's in the uh, 111, 112. It's included in this number here. Mm -hmm. the, the condos at green leaves are actually all located in Amherst. Uh, there's 11 parcels in town that have two separate houses on them. 96, two family and 13, three family. And the seven apartment units, basically, those are four family or higher. We estimate that probably about 1,600 houses would be considered owner-occupied. Okay, thank you. Uh, small commercial exemption, you can grant up to 10% of the parcel's assessed value off 
of the value when calculating the tax. There has to meet two criteria. It has to be assessed for less than $1 million, the parcel, and it has to have less than 10 annualized employees in the business that's occupying the property. And so, how many businesses do we have that would qualify for that? Uh, there's 55 commercial properties that would qualify for that. It's a, it, with the, like the residential exemption, the commercial property tax base would make up that. So the tax rate would be slightly higher, but there's so many, so few parcels that would qualify in such a small amount. The tax rate, I believe it, instead of, uh, it would drop like a penny. There's not a huge difference in the tax with the small commercial because it's only 10%. Uh, pros of a split rate, you'd have lower residential taxes and increased residential property values. The cons, we'd get more commercial, industrial, and personal property abatement applications. And with those application increases, we're going to get increased expenses. The split rate must be voted every year. We had it in 2001. We had a split rate. For 20, 22, 21 was a single rate, 22 was the split rate, 23 was single, and now we're back here for 24. Uh, any override that's funded through the split rate could be put back on residential. It's a dangerous tactic. It, Did that two if, years ago. if there's a shift in the... Uh, in the board makeup, you could say, oh, we'll fund an override by charging commercial more, but then you could get two select and switch out and it could get flipped back. Uh, this is a slide that I include every year. These studies are, are fairly old. The most recent one that I have is the American Family and Trust from 2010. And this shows how much the town spends basically on a large average for every dollar of taxes paid. So for every dollar of taxes paid for residential, we're incurring a dollar sixteen in expenses. Commercial and industrial is twenty nine cents for every dollar paid, and farming and open space is thirty five cents. Now the farming and open space it might seem counter to having commercial at twenty nine cents. <laughs> but commercial and industrial values are significantly higher. Like in the slide that we had previously where the, the chapter land parcel would only be paying $60 a year in taxes. So for that parcel with this, it would really only be about $18 worth of services a year. Uh, this is a more broken down of mass commu communities of cities that were used for American Farmland Trust. There's two from Deerfield. One is from 92, which is kind of really old. The 2009 one had a, it's $1.14, 31 and 33 cents. So it's fairly similar. Uh, the assessor's recommendations, the board is recommending adopting a single tax rate for 2024, which would be adopting a, a factor of 1.00. They're recommending no open space discount no residential exemption and no small commercial exemption. And if a single tax rate of 1139 is adopted, the unused levy capacity would be $1,866. And then if there's any questions or comments. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, commercial space values? Uh, I know a lot of people think that due to COVID, the prices have come way down on values, but we've had a lot of sales in town in the last three years. Um, <clears throat> we've got one shopping center that we had at $16 million that sold for 27 million just last year. We had another one that sold at the start of COVID that split between Amherst and Hadley. And between the two communities, we had it at seven, that sold for 19. So the values are still, they're, they're going up. Uh, there's a few instances where, where some values have dropped a little still in the commercial, but we had to take a big look at the big stores this year, the big strip centers. And they really, these sales indicated that those needed to go up. That's where most of the commercial growth came from. 
So the state did a 100% evaluation on every city in town, was it two years ago? Um, we right. Last year, we had a, the state came in and reviewed all of our numbers. Right. So we had 100% reevaluation done, which increased yeah. some people's taxes then. Um, yeah, the tax bills went up a significant amount for 23 last year. When do you anticipate that that might happen again? Is there any time frame that the, they do this? Uh, Revaluations by the state are now every five years. So we're looking at, it was 23, the next one will be 28 before the next one, but they require us to adjust values every year. We had to adjust the values up this year and it went up. We're, we didn't what go you, up. What do you base that on when you say you have, you yourself, without the state doing it, that you have to reevaluate? How, how do you come to that conclusion to reevaluate? Uh, the properties they have certain metrics that we have to meet they take all the sales and analyze them they look at what it's the prior year assessment was versus what it sold for and then we have to go through and create new valuation metrics to change the value and then they rerun the ratios again and we have to be between 90 and 110 percent for a ratio this year we're at 92 and a half percent for single family mm -hmm. we kept it a little lower because we're we anticipated with interest rates going up that home prices would home sales would definitely stagnate mm -hmm. and that we thought prices would either hold constant or drop and maybe we can keep the same value again for next year we might have to tweak them up a little bit next year as well but we're not looking at anything like we had in the, the past few years where the yeah. values were going up or the taxes were going up 400. This year, the average increase is going to be about $175. Can you just, for anyone that might be watching this later, listening now, um, just kind of go over why you're um, recommending like no open space di discount, no um, residential exemption, and, and no small commercial exemption? Uh, yeah. Uh, the single rate, basically, with the exception of 22, when we really... See, saw a huge in, uh, decrease in commercial values mm -hmm. coupled with a huge increase in residential values. The board has traditionally recommended a single rate. That would mean that everybody would pay basically based on their full market value. Uh, commercial values rebounded last year. So we went, we recommended going back to a single rate. Mm -hmm. The open space discount, we don't really have open space. So you could grant it, but it wouldn't really change anything. Mm -hmm. The residential exemption, a lot of the properties in town are owner occupied. Basically what a residential exemption does, I think there's only about 10 or 15 communities in the state that offer the residential exemption. It's mostly used on resort communities out in the Cape. Mm -hmm. Like I think Nantucket offers it where you've got the year round residents living in $600,000 homes mm -hmm. where they would get the discount, but the Oceanside vacation homes are valued at 15 million. So they pay just a fraction of what they would pay if they had a didn't offer that. Mm -hmm. And the small commercial exemption, there's so few businesses. There's a lot of businesses that have less than 10 employees, mm -hmm. but they're located in buildings that house other businesses or they're in the malls. Any you could pick any one of the malls, they're all assessed for more than a million, or there's a build a business in that building that has more than 10 annualized employees. Okay. Thank you. I move that we uh, accept these <clears throat> recommendations. I'll second the motion. Okay, mo motioned by Jane, seconded by Molly. Is there any further discussion on that? Alex, anybody on there? All right. Roll, uh, not roll call, oh, sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Excellent. Thank you guys for okay, your time thanks. and the thanks, presentation. Guys. Thank you very much. Good job, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. to hear from you. Okay, um, so we're going to move into the uh, public comment section. So it's a period of time for the public to bring their concerns before us. Um, we'll hear public comments for 15 minutes. Please try to limit your comments to three minutes. Um, is there anyone here for public comments? Is there anyone on the line? Anyone physically here for public comments? 
Yeah, so I if you think I have the coalition complaint on a bylaw. Come on up. So yeah, just come on up so that um if you're if you sit there, then that microphone oh. will let people hear you. <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you all, you selectmen. Officer Cook's very familiar with this. The selectman Randy is. And I got one neighbor, I was talking to Mr. Quinlan, line of sight restriction. He's been up their house, it's the Mackins. She, he was, he told her, you cannot do what you're doing, planting bushes on town property, blocking my view in the corner lot. She says, you do not enforce this in the rest of the town. So basically, don't bother me. So she won't comply. So he's at wit's end. Mr. Cook helped me a lot to get Mr. Mackin to quit blocking my road after six weeks. He now we quit blocking. And I believe, Mr. Cook, you talked to Mr. Mackin the other day? Okay, Cook thought, I'm sorry, Quinlan thought you did. So he's dealt with him before. So basically, if uh, Mr. Quinlan doesn't afford in a reasonable amount of time, what do I do? He planted, they planted two bushes, probably about six, seven feet high, the corner lot. There's a corner by Mount Water Road. He, Randy knows where it is. It's a little dangerous to have that type of stuff there. It's not, it's not on her land, not on my land. It's on town land. And you've got to have that line of sight law if you want to read that. It's a clear violation. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees with it. The Mackins, Randy, myself, and I'm sure Mr. Mm -hmm. Cook does. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're like pulling teeth to get them to do things. Numerous APR violations for the last year and a half. I'm not even going to bring those up today. So they, they've been a nuisance. Mr. Cook has government to comply. Um, Quinlan has government to move the boundaries back. So I'm making some progress, but it's like tooth and nail. And those bushes there, they're like a hay, bundle of haystacks, about six, seven feet high. It definitely hurt the view because a bad corner. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the police. Well, I start with a DPW guy. He says, see, Quinlan. Quinlan sends me down to the police station. It's actually Quinlan's job. So about five or six days, I just mowed them with a hand mower, six feet, six inches above the ground. So they're savable. I didn't kill the plants. Mm -hmm. Now you can see because I rent that land to Plainville Farms, and they have a lot of people working from Guatemala, Honduras. They're probably five foot two on a good day. So you get an angle with that. So it's, you put bushes in between, you're adding for somebody to get hurt. Mm -hmm. So. And they still haven't dug those tree up the bushes up. They're safe. I didn't destroy them. So basically, how do you uh, put some pep in his ass to get something done in a reasonable time? There's um, penalties you can do, like fining, stuff like that. Mr. Cook's been up that place numerous times. He can feel you the headache these guys are. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. Yeah. So that would be like a scrap thing later. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll have to take it under advisement. Oh, I figure it does not be done today. So I already trimmed yeah. the push it down. So the concern of seeing now is that, but they still are defying people. Mm -hmm. and, and there's more restrictions. The APR, I got those papers too, but I don't have to go that far. Okay. So, yeah. so basically, you'll have a pep talk with Mr. Quinlan, and yeah. you'll see Mr. Cook in the, in the mm -hmm. job will be pushed around. Well, well. We'll get in contact with the right people to take care of it for you. Well, I think I already have between the police and that uh, is <clears throat> nobody left unless I want to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, unfortunately, with public comments, I can't like. Oh, I know you're restricted. Long, I work on private business. <laughs> it's a lot easier. But yeah, we'll 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 work on that. So how does this work now? I make a complaint now and it comes up to the next meeting. Um, if it's something that would require further discussion, then yes. They got to dig them not... out. It's a clear violation. Everybody agrees with that. Quit it. Maggots. So, and the violation is right here. Mm -hmm. So, what is considered enforcement? I just trimmed them. That solved the problem, but I did not dig them out. She still can have them back. I, I could care less. They even got a trespass warrant against me. Doesn't bother me. They tried to get a restraining order. Mm -hmm. My lawyers basically put a wash to that. And I said, if you're going to get along with your neighbor, you still got to talk. You don't have to like them, but you still should have open communication. He doesn't want me to wave at his wife or him when I drive by. I drive by all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not a good situation. Understandable. Um, okay. So we will we will work. Look into it and think yeah. of something. But yep. like I said, Mr. Cook's been very good. My road's not blocked. Randy's talking before the survey's good. And basically, quit pushing it like that. So he has backed down. Okay. 
Well, thank, well, thank you. Lieutenant, you help me in Randy. Thank Sorry, you. I had to come this far. So basically, Quinlan won't be too happy with me. But <laughs> I told him I'm coming here tonight. Okay, thanks a lot, Ross. See thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else here for public comments? I'm, I'm going to make a, a comment tonight um, as a public comment. Um, I'd like to um, lodge a complaint against Jane uh, in regards to the Board of Health meeting. Uh, she is in violation of the code of conduct that we signed. Um, and if she would go back and review the Board of Health uh, meeting, she'll see how she is in violation. I'd like her to speak with Amy and Carolyn on that. Um, I've been on the board for seven terms. And in this meeting, she basically said that I did not work well with the rest of the board members. And I feel that that's um, certainly not something that I have ever faced in my 21 years. So uh, I was very disheartened to uh, see that on the Board of Health and uh, other things that had occurred on the Board of Health also that should not have been there. So I, um, that's, that's my complaint for tonight. Okay. So this is something that we can bring up in, an, in another meeting. Um, as far as kind of expectations for us when we are at other meetings, um, whether it's a board or a committee, whether we're a liaison or we're just there to um, to listen. So just something that we can think go over. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Okay. All right, moving over to the consent agenda, we have warrant PR2408. AP2418, AP2418S, AP2417S, AP2417, AP2417INS, AP2417V, PR2407, also declaration of surplus property from the DPW and also the police department. Motion to approve. I'd like to know what the uh, surplus property oh, it's on, is. Oh, it's on the... Oh, down further? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to just say what it is for, for the public? Yeah, I think that would be a good okay. idea. Yeah. So let them know what, what's out there for them. Um, so the, the surplus for the police department is um, 10 body cameras, um, one electronic docking system, two Vista HD bases, and one Vista... Um, FY, uh, FY, <coughs> Wi-Fi base. Um, and then for the DPW, it is um, a 2000 gallon tank, a 2010 Crown Victoria, <clears throat> a 2009 Crown Victoria, uh, miscellaneous Crown Victorian tires and rims, and a Canon printer and ink. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Molly, seconded by Joyce. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Excellent. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'd like to invite up uh, Chief Mason. And Lieutenant Cook, if you want to come up as well. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like I swallowed a chip wrong. <laughs> but I haven't eaten chips. <laughs> Where's your maple candy? Yeah, okay. An official police <laughs> issue. <laughs> so thank you for having us. Uh, we're here tonight to make two appointments, um, two vacancies that we have on our roster. One is part-time and one is Full time, and we have uh, Melanie and Haley over there. Uh, we have just some short bios to read to you uh, about them, and Mitch is going to do Mel, and uh, I will read uh, Haley's. So I'm going to go ahead. First. Yeah, great. Uh, I have the pleasure of presenting to you Melanie Sanciola for your consideration to uh, appointment as a special police officer. Melanie is originally from Connecticut, and following her graduation from the University of New Haven with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. She became a full-time police officer for UMass Amherst and graduated the full-time police academy in 2020. <clears throat> a recent career change is, uh, has her pursuing her certification as an EMT. 
Although in the meantime, she applied to be a traffic control officer uh, in the town of Hadley. And you may recall appointing her maybe two or three months ago to that position. Mm -hmm. Since coming on the department, she has been a hard worker and has now expressed an interest in working as a special police officer. And she has also expressed interest in becoming certified to work in the communication center. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, she comes highly recommended by her supervisors at UMass PD, and we would request that you, uh, as a select board, appoint Melanie Cianciola as a special police officer. All right. All right. So moved. Welcome. Second. Second. <laughs> Motion by Joyce, seconded by Molly. Is there any further discussion? Melanie, do you have anything you'd like to say? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. All right. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Welcome. <laughs> So uh, seated next to Melanie is Haley Gaudet. Uh, Haley lives in Holyoke, Mass, and she has an associate's degree in criminal justice from Holyoke Community College. She began her career in law enforcement in 2018 as a special police officer in East Hampton. Previous to that, she actually worked as a police cadet at UMass Amherst. Um, Haley has worked as a full-time police officer in East Hampton from 2019 up until she uh, applied to our department. So present day. She comes very highly recommended by the uh, East Hampton Chief of Police. He was not happy to hear that she was leaving. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he advised us that she will be missed. Haley has multiple certifications, including sexual assault investigation, basic and advanced crash investigation, and uh, crash reconstruction. And she is also a certified EMT. Uh, while crash investigation and reconstruction is a significant undertaking, it's a very uh, highly sought after specialty. Uh, it's going to be a huge, uh, an immense benefit to our department. Uh, she also has some unique training that I have yet to see, not only in new hires, but in pretty much anywhere. She is trained in equine cruelty investigations, as well as large animal rescue training. So that's pretty cool. Never seen that before. That's great. She is fully qualified to begin with our department immediately, and she only needs to complete an abbreviated field training program. We do have a vacancy in our ranks, and I would like to recommend her to be appointed as our newest full time police officer. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> All right, we'll do a motion by Randy and seconded by Joyce. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Kelly, do you want to say anything? <laughs> so uh, I will take 30 more seconds of your time if you don't mind. Um, hiring processes are not fun. Uh, I'm sure anybody that's ever been in a leadership role knows that they're not a, a joyful experience, not just because, you know, you have a vacancy to fill, but also because it's a it's a difficult uh, endeavor uh, to navigate. And the landscape of policing uh, as many of you know, uh, as far as hiring goes, has been really difficult to navigate, especially in the recent past. I want to say thank you to this board and to past boards, as well as to the leadership of this town for putting us in a position to be able to compete with other departments. Um, I've told several of you uh, offline that we can only do so much at the in, on the inside of the police department to try to make it a... Um, a palatable place to work and an enjoyable work environment in the profession that we're in, but we need assistance from our, our leaders uh, to uh, help bear a, a financial burden so that we can compete with other police departments. Uh, East Hampton PD pays very well. Um, Haley is going to be taking a pay cut. However, if not for the efforts of this board and past boards to put us in a much better position, um, she is able to accept that, that uh, pay cut. Had we not made those strides, I don't think she would have been able to make this decision to, to come to our department. <clears throat> because of where we are uh, and where you've supported us to put us um, as far as you know, being able to pay people appropriately and, and be competitive, uh, the applicants that we are getting uh, have both the personalities we're looking for, the good human spirit that we're looking for, and we're also now getting individuals who have training, have the training that we're looking for. Um, that would have been impossible just just a few years ago, just a few contracts ago. Um, so we're 
you know, we have we've had a list of uh, of individuals that you know we sorted through. We made the selection for Haley because she was she was the outright winner uh, for that position. But some of the other folks on there and some of the people that have actually reached out to us recently who are asking for potential openings coming up are the same type of people. Um, they're people that have uh, good hearts and we're hiring. We're trying to hire good people now and we'll teach them how to be police officers. But they like I said, uh, because of the fact that you've been so supportive of us, we're able we're actually finding people that fit both categories. So I just wanted to say thank you and kudos to you uh, for uh, where you've put uh, at least law enforcement in this town. Thank so you. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. But I, I'd like to say something. <laughs> oh, geez, I knew I shouldn't. <laughs> well, I, I think I think because of um, our our leadership at the public safety, our police, and our fire, and I I think that you have shown what professionalism is in the town of Hadley that it draws people that want to come in and work for this town because of you. Um, and what you do with our police officers and everything. So I think that's another big draw for us is to have you in the positions that you're in. And we appreciate you. Well, thank you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Do we need to second that? Or? Both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go before it gets any mushier. <laughs> thank you. Good night. All right. Um, so next up, we have the, the cannabis equity policy. This is a, a first kind of look, nothing that we're voting on tonight. No, just your first read. I can give you a, a little history, although you do have a memorandum uh, and you also have an example of what Hadley's would look like. Uh, but this was uh, chapter 180 of the acts of 2022, an act relative to equity in the cannabis industry that was passed by Governor Baker. And so the Cannabis Control Commission has been asked to ensure that municipalities are all uh, take, getting this policy and putting it together. And it really is, um, it's to make sure that anyone can uh, become an owner of one of these establishments and part particularly uh, focusing on what they call, um, they have to qualify for SEP or EEA and it's basically equity. It's making sure that um, there's certain criteria if they've had a past history when it used to be that you were arrested for marijuana for even small amounts that that would not be held against you. So there's a lot of this it's based on where some of these um, businesses um, are located that this three, four pages of the explanation of the policy, that's the general overview, but we do need to adopt that. We have two establishments, but you don't know if one's ever gonna close or start again, or making sure as we move forward with our host agreements that we're consistent. So that is for you to take a look at. If you have any questions, let me know, um, but I'll make sure it's back on the next agenda so you guys can vote on it. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to invite uh, our new tree warden. To, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so he is now a uh, qualified tree warden. Ooh, so congratulations. Congratulations. congratulations today. <laughs> oh, you passed the test today? Passed the test. Nice. <laughs> another uh, job. Yeah, another job. <laughs> uh, so I'm coming before you this evening. Uh, I was hoping Lieutenant Cook could join me. Uh, I can grab him. Uh, uh, Thought you were out of here, huh? <laughs> so, so I'm coming to, uh, before you tonight with uh, some uh, parking <clears throat> problems on North Lane. Uh, we're starting to have a lot of erosion of the earth there from people trying to park off the road. And uh, it's just really causing a mess there to, you know, the the earth is, there's no grass anymore to prevent any erosion or anything like that. It's uh, very detrimental to the tree canopy too, not to park on the roots. It's, it's very bad for our, our trees along that stretch of road. And uh, I know uh, Mitch Cook does have a little, in talking to him, had some concern about when cars are parked there. There is a lot of traffic there that is going over the yellow line into the other lane to navigate. And in our discussions, we would request that uh, we put no parking on North Lane. 
is that because there are already a parking area, um, the Dawson conservation area. So that's parking there that they can still yes. use. Are you referring to the part where it I, I, I did send I some pictures to the uh okay along, just, along the street yeah it's along not, the street it's side not up along the round the bend where no. people sometimes park also. Is that allowable to have them park there or not? Around the bend it is posted no parking there also just, just because of the corner. Yeah. Uh but as you can see in those photos, it, it's getting pretty bad there. Yeah. Well, and uh, the problem is that, I mean, anytime that I've driven by and I've seen cars parked in the roadway, mm -hmm. the parking spaces are all taken. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we built that parking lot really there, popular. well, yeah, yeah, we have a, if you build it, they will come situation mm -hmm. here. And is there any way we can increase the parking lot? Uh, when we built that parking lot a couple of years ago, the uh, Conservation Commission uh, would not allow it to be any bigger uh, due to where it is along the dike and uh, all the factors of grass and parking, et cetera, within that buffer zone of the river. So there is some uh, environmental things that go along with that section of road. And we're looking at the use of the walking along the levee there also actually is is, is that becoming detrimental also because we now we're looking into that and having had repaired it once already several years ago what's the situation up on top with everybody using that as a, as a traffic area actually it's it's war right down to the dirt there's no more yeah. grass and that has been brought to our attention by the uh consultants that are looking at the dike mm -hmm. it is concerning to them that there is no grass for stabilization of the top of the dike mm -hmm. and we made an attempt to plant some grass there it's just it, it's impossible to do the foot track there is uh crazy on the so who's the owner of those, that property is it the town the, the town the town is yeah. mm -hmm. So Jeez, wouldn't that be a thing to put up when I'm walking? Yikes. There's I remember yikes on the dikes. years ago there was an issue <laughs> when we were talking about parking on the common near Route 9 about we needed to make capability so that we could actually give tickets, but that's now being done and that would be applicable throughout the town. It would be. And so we've taken an approach uh, relative to the town's property and working with Ernie's towing and clearly posting areas that you would select for it and designate as no parking, uh, areas such as the Bay Road Reservoir, areas such as West Street Commons by Esalen Cafe. And this would be another area that we feel as though it would be appropriate to partner with Ernie's towing as much as we as the police department and obviously the town doesn't want to be towing folks' cars. Unfortunately, the only effective way that we have found is to take this approach. We've found a significant reduction in <clears throat> issues at the reservoirs, although there are issues. We've seen a reduction in issues on West Street, although there are issues. And um, we do see uh, when, when, when Ernie's towing shows up somewhere, we see people come running quick. And that's probably the best lesson that folks can get is that near miss and spreading the word amongst the community saying, you can't really park there, you can get your car towed. Um, so so the situation I think is appropriate. So you can you can put a no parking sign there and, and you have no parking down as it goes around the corner. Mm -hmm. What's going to prevent people from parking on the town common? We did, Scott and I discussed <laughs> that as a likely result of yeah. this. Yeah. Although I think we can really only address one issue at a time unless the select board wants to take up posting on well, you know what you know what's going to happen you do i mean well, that's a given is there a way to provide so not all i mean a lot of people go and they they kind of stay right there and maybe they take dogs for a quick walk or whatever many people are there to, to view the sunsets because they're beautiful right there um but there are also a number of people who actually walk like the whole trail and that trail goes all the oh, way yeah. down behind the Hampton. Well, I think a lot of people um, go down cemetery road, yeah. right. And then where the dike comes up there and then they, so they, they kind of walk over there and then back again. Is there any way to create like alternative 
parking on the other side of it for people who want to go for a longer walk? I, I think you could park on uh, the dump road, either side of the dump road. There's really nothing there. And you can access the, the dike from if you, you know, walk the fence. I think line you're going to have a problem because landfill. somebody's going to be building a house in the garage down there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so. it, like the lieutenant said, it's a it's a compounding problem. We're gonna we're gonna move it from North Lane to the Common or whatever. It's just it, personally, I at this point, if the people parked in that Common, I think for uh, me it would be better. At least we would be preserving the trees because, like I said, the the damage to the root structure, the trees, just the compaction of the soil and all the traffic mm -hmm. on the roots is gonna. You know, there's some nice trees there that. You know, I'm the provider of shade in Hadley, and I'm supposed to be protecting these trees. And I, I think it's the right thing to do if they park on that common. At least there's no trees over there to uh, really destroy. And then you, I think the cars will not be uh, leaving the lane of travel to uh, navigate. Also, I think it may be better to let them park on that lower end of the common. Too bad we can't get some of those things from Balazar there to. Through the curbing, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're hard for snow yeah. removal. Though. Yeah, the curbs yeah. don't and plows really don't mix too well. But. Um, so what is the fine for parking where it says no parking? Is that according to the area or is it a flat rate? I believe it's a flat rate that, um, I think we did that with the uh West Street, yeah, it was $25. I, you just take them. I don't think it's been adjusted in, in several years and something that um, we probably should be taking up a bylaw committee. Mm -hmm. um, but parking tickets really, they're more of a hassle than they're generally worth. Um, I was just thinking that if we do this before we actually start towing people and get a really nasty reputation, if we take it to them, even though it may be a hassle, it's it's significant enough that there's something that says, you, you know, they did something wrong. And I just want to clarify, I don't mean that the process of us issuing tickets is not necessarily a hassle. What I mean by what the, the, the process of enforcement of a parking ticket is very much a hassle. If they don't pay, then, uh, well, first and foremost, even if we do issue a citation, uh, a parking ticket to someone, the law requires that the law requires that the parking clerk dismiss the first violation in any calendar year. So any pretty much any any parking ticket that we would issue, they would have to be dismissed. And unless they got a second one, then be enforceable then. And then if they didn't pay, then it would be through the through the collector's office. They'd have to go through a marketing procedure to uh to um to place a mark on their license or their registration to make it non-renewable to enforce the payment. So all of that is a significant process for, you know, to enforce the parking bylaws and they're generally ineffective. And so, like I was saying, that parking and towing is not something that we like to do. Um, but, but could we direct people to, I mean, <laughs> direct parking. people to the common and say, you know, no parking, you know, tow zone, but also say overflow parking. We're on the common. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's kind of like, and it's going to look like that. Well, no, that's what Scott's saying. Well, it's his preference is that people park on the common. It, it, like I said, it, it it's not that we don't want people to come walk the dike and visit the dike. It's just, it's causing an environmental problem on top of the dike, the park, the roadway, et cetera. And I, I just, it, we're going to push the problem to one spot or another, but as mm -hmm. you know, uh, is parking on Cemetery Road better and accessing the dike over there? I no. may or may not. It, it's And you've got the farmers going. Yeah, you got the farmers that are going to be going in and out of there. From it, April there's until September. Really not a good solution, but right. I I think on the, I, people do park on the end of the common there now when the lot is overfilled, there is mm -hmm. just people navigate over there. Uh, like I said, I there is some drainage there also on the common, so it doesn't stay quite as wet on North Lane, so it, it may be better. Well, I'm more interested in us protecting the dike than anything else, whether or not people like to take a walk or not. Yeah. You know, this is, 
you know, something that we paid over $600,000 for several years ago, that is certainly going to not be that price tag again, if we have to do something with that dike again. And we already know it's starting to erode in different areas. Yeah. So, I mean, why are we going to promote comedy? Like, the, yeah. the use of it? I, I, I agree with you that I, I think there should be no parking on the common period. No. Uh, unless it's a town sanctioned event or whatever, if uh, the seniors are having a band underneath the trees or something, that's that's a different exactly. story. But for just you want to park there for whatever reason, I'll, I I just don't agree with that. I I, I haven't. I talked to Mitch about that multiple times. I brought it in front of the board a while back. The hay bales on the common and mm -hmm. kind of a lot of misuse of it. I I just personally think we shouldn't have parking on it. Period. I just mm -hmm. and. Getting back to your comment, Joyce, uh, I hear a lot of cl complaints from my guys when we go to perform maintenance on the dike, the uh, uh, bags of dog feces. Yeah. It, it's bad there. We we installed a trash barrel over there to try to make it better so the the bags oh, are maybe in one spot. In the bag. Oh, yeah. whoop de doo -da. Then they leave the bag. They throw, they throw it over the... Lawn. Somebody's front lawn. Yeah, yeah, they throw it into the over the... Dyke. into the dike that was another thing that was brought up from yeah. the uh consultants that there's you know trash and this and that against mm -hmm. the, the waterway it, it it is a problem so i i mean i you know i've driven out to plum island yeah you know I've been there. right and gotten there only to find out that the parking lot was full yeah and you either walk like i don't know four miles or something yeah so you know i'm, I'm sure Many people will be disappointed, um, but I I agree. I think protecting protecting the area is the most important thing. So I mean, I'd I'd be I'd rather say no than to have the center of the town flooded for some unknown reason yeah. somewhere down the road. I might not be alive at that time, but again, it could happen somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. So is that what you need from us? Permission to put up the signs, or you can just do it anyway. Uh, we're I'm looking for permission for for you to put up the signs and declare it. A no parking zone and tow zone and, and tow zone and to go back to jane's concern about parking cars i think everybody here knows and for anybody listening in we're a fair department and uh you know we we, we never take you know heavy-handed action and i think that during this you know following the installation of these signs if we get complaints if Scott, if Scott calls us to tell us that there's cars parked there, we're not going to send tow trucks immediately. Our response would be go out there with a cruiser, sit there with the lights on, and within 10 seconds, someone's going to come running. And we will approach this from uh, an educational perspective at first to get the word out. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take the social media if we have to. And, uh, and then following a period of uh, community education, at that point, we would, we would turn to telling. No. So um, I think, oh, sorry, did you have something that you wanted to add? I asked was it possible that it has to do with uh, a permit like the Hebrew Reservoir? Because, I mean, I walk by my dog on, on the levee, and <laughs> it's a possible purpose to keep an eye on it. Um, but I can tell you that the traffic volume, the number of folks that are very disrespectful of the town and other properties, like this has been pieces all over the place, mm -hmm. not having a dog on the beaches. My dog was attacked by other dogs that was on them. Um, I'm just wondering because I would be taken away from the residents who deserve to be able to take a look at those sunsets and look at the uh, curve. If there's some way to think of some sort of affirming I could do in the other block. And then put up all the more property signs and limit it to what's what we have for space. If, if I see that the parking lot is full, I find a good place to walk about it. And so do we have complete control over the that conservation area? There's no involvement from Kestrel or anybody else, right? That's strictly town of Hadley. Yeah. 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 Why don't we do permitting for the other? Yeah. If you I have a permit a on idea. your car, then you can park there. If you don't, move on. So thinking further on what Molly was saying about directing people to other places, we have at the appropriate hours parking at the schools and at, at here town parking lots and since most of these people are going to walk the distance they would have to go from those places to the dike if they really want to walk 
in the scenic view, they should, you know, have that as an option. If they're not Hadley residents and they don't get permitting, we 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 want to start limiting people that walk the dike because it's not going to last forever. We have to protect the levee. And if we don't do something now, we're going to be in trouble in five or 10 years. I think that is the major point of all of this exercise right. is to, yeah. based on what you've said, that the, the dike is getting too much wear and tear. That should be the number one priority, dealing with that. If we cut the parking back, however we do it, then obviously that's going to have less people walking the dike, less impact. So um, it, it's going to be a very uh, interesting change for a lot of people who are used to using it. Um, and I mean, I, th I think I, I agree that Hadley people definitely should be allowed to use it as long as we're not every resident in town doesn't use it every day and then, you know, continues with the, the wear. Um, but if we're going to limit the parking, then I think we limit it with this this uh, parking pass situation. I think that's probably so the best. Two steps, um, authorize the placement of the signs to start and then the parking pass would probably be a more involved conversation and maybe have a proposal come back about how that's going to work. If it's exactly the same as the reservoir or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would the same pass be able to be for both places and just save issuing passes? Does so, it the same clientele? I would imagine Pro so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be required to use both, oh, to go both to both places. places. Right. But, but if but you rather chose to. Two separate yeah. things going on. Yeah, no, that, I agree with that. Permit for town yeah. park, good walk, you get yeah. this and you show Stadium. it whichever one you collect. It's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what what are your feelings on the common aspect of it? Would no, you like parking. that posted too? No You're parking? Right. I think so. No parking. Uh, well, uh, so we're just going to be a town with the red parking signs on every street. street. It, it, and, and they shouldn't be parking on it either unless there's a function going on. Well, exactly. They have, So they're going to have the birthday party or the wedding or something. So maybe, again, we start with the Permission. issue at hand, which is the street. Take it one step at a time. And then watch and see what happens. I think a lot of people won't even think to park on the common. They'll probably just leave and go somewhere else if they want to take their pupper for a walk. Um, but I think we have you know. something in place already where people have to apply for a permit um, to have a, a wedding or anything on the common. Is it, isn't that correct or a function? But if you have it in your house or in your yard, because those yards are Well, you still should be asking us for permission to park on the common. And you still should have to have a permit for it. So if you're having that big of a party that you need extra parking, then you need to notify the police that that amount of cars are going to be parking there and that amount of traffic are going to be going across the street either way because people fly down that street and come around that corner. I, I just think that for the safety of people, if they're going to be using the common, I don't see that many people having parties or whatever on the common that actually use it the biggest party of the year is memorial day when everybody's on there for the parade correct yeah or the asparagus festival or something like that but they all have to That's have perfect. a permit mm -hmm. so i think the rexes got married on the common and they came to us for a permit mm -hmm. so, I, I mean I, people do do that i think molly's idea is a good one to just start with north north lane and see where it goes from there because otherwise we're going to be putting no parking signs up on the whole common every it's gonna 50 feet so it ain't gonna be pretty no I'm that's what i was gonna idiot. ask you i would i would suggest that if we did it on the common light part uh not plaster just do our due diligence market you know in strategic locations and uh just call it good enough. I, I think all the signs around just in general are, you know, a nuisance and, you know, nobody looks at them anyways. It's, it's, noise. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sign graffiti is the, the new term. And it's just, I don't agree with it. I, I think it would, it would cause us more maintenance problems, mowing, et cetera. If yeah. we, if we did it, I would just lightly do it. 
So make a motion to authorize the DPW director in concert with the Hadley Police Department to find appropriate placement for no parking signs along North Lane. Second. All right, motion did by Molly, seconded by Randy. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd like those signs to say uh, you will be towed. Because some people don't take things seriously. And if it says it, then they can't call up and say, I didn't know I was going to be towed. I was just going for a walk with my dog. So does Molly need to amend her motion to? No. Way. No. Okay. Just say no parking. And to, how about adding it to coming back for permit yeah, well, issue at another meeting? Well, I, I don't think we need to vote no. that. I okay. think we'll just, mm -hmm. just put that on the yeah. agenda. Right. For another, another discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Warden. Thank you. Mr. Tree Warden. Mr. <laughs> Warden. Um, okay, so DPW Facility Schematic Design Committee. Um, so we're going to discuss the continuation with the current committee or creating a new one. Yeah, I can tell you, and I don't know what's happened in Hadley, but what often happens is through this phase where you have a feasibility study, then you move to design and um, building. Oftentimes, sometimes it's the, it's the same, but at this point you would turn that committee into a, a building committee, even though you're, right now you're just doing schematics. It is part of the building process because that's where you want some continu continuation um, with the same members. So you guys have that option to make it bigger, change it up completely. It's really what you guys want to discuss on what to do at this point. I would say you would want to probably call it a building committee at this point. Now, do, can you just remind everyone who's on the committee? Randy, help me out. Have like, you know, okay. and their types. Okay, so we have myself, Tom Quinlan, building inspector. Jim Maximowski is the chairman. Andy Klepacki, Wally Sykowski. Gary. Gary Berg, Scott, Scott McCarthy, and Carolyn sits in as a non-voting member. So member. I'd suggest I think um, I think special town meeting was a good um, forum to to get a sense of the types of questions people in town have about the proposed new building. So. You know, Randy, listening to you, the only person on that on the committee right now who's not either a municipal employee or on another town committee is Wally, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to strongly suggest we get additional input from the residents. Um, I think there were a lot of voices at, at town meeting that were heard that gave me a sense that there are, you know, a lot of, just a lot of questions and people question, wondering about alternatives. So I don't know if that means we make the committee, just make the committee bigger, or if we make some of the municipal employees um, advisory, but they don't get a vote, or I don't know how to, you know, how, how we want to do it. But I, I do think we need additional people on that group. And I think it's going to put us in a better position going to town meeting when we ultimately make the ask. So I think the... Obviously, we want to keep it at an odd number of voting members because that makes committees work better. And if we added two res two more residential representatives, it would be appropriate. Do you, I was going to, since you're on that, do you feel like the committee that you have right now is representative of the town's needs from who's on there and, and their knowledge? Well, we have a very good knowledge base, and I think that the people that work for the DPW are necessary elements because they're going to ultimately have to work in this building. So I think it's appropriate to keep them on the board. <clears throat> a couple of more people wouldn't be bad. Uh, new ideas are always welcome. Uh, we just don't want to get too many people and we, it, things will get out of control. Um, so, I mean, to Molly's point, at the end of the day, town meeting is going to be the ultimate decision maker, not this committee. 
we're going to, if we stay as we are, we're going to recommend, and then the, qu the questions will come at more than likely at town meeting. But if we can get some of them out front, that would be a good thing. So I have no problem had adding a couple of more people to the committee. Okay, I think a couple of I think like residents, two. two more probably that have some knowledge of um, yeah engineering or something of that nature uh, would certainly be helpful. I would yeah I would say two maximum just because when you get a committee that too big. that's too big you have like too many hands in the cookie mm -hmm. jar type mm -hmm. of thing and then mm -hmm. you can kind of end up with ultra long meetings and kind of going different directions. And um, I just was just, it sounds like a cohesive group already. So yeah. adding two more people. Yeah, um, I think we work very well together and we're not, we're not, everybody's not always on the same page and nobody's afraid to voice their opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the town administrator is there. Uh, wait, she's, wait. <laughs> I keep you guys out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is that it doesn't matter who's there. We we say what we need to say. And, you know, if you know, money's always a question, we, we don't just say, okay, we're going to suggest we build this building and it's cost $200 million and that's it. Mm -hmm. We are very aware that town meeting has to approve it and money is always the big factor. And when do you meet, Randy? Well, we've... We're meeting once a month, mm -hmm. and since town meeting, I don't. Do we have anything scheduled coming up, Scott? That you're aware of? We haven't had anything uh, after the town meeting, and then the meeting before the town meeting was canceled. Uh, people were going to this right. Uh, next time. So, but yeah, the last thing we we did was uh, finalize the open house at the DPW, mm -hmm. but it is typically once a month, and it's usually the second. Third Wednesday at four o'clock. That way, there those there. of us come here and have the meeting, and then we get to stay and come to the support meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, should we solicit letters of or emails <laughs> at this point? It's usually, usually an email of interest from people who oh. might want to participate on the committee. I don't see why not. All right, and then two, two. Yeah, two. I think. Yep. To the maximum. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're listening on the line, we are looking for two more individuals to submit a letter of intent. Is that what it's called? Sure. Interest. In the, of interest. Yeah. And um, I can also, we should probably pick a date when they should be due mm -hmm. so that you would have, you know, if you've got five or 10, you'll be able to kind of screen it down a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe interview some. So every a month. Um, look. Yeah, yeah, and there's a holiday before, next week. Before so Christmas, but by December fifteenth, maybe, and Just, then we yeah, let's the can December fifteenth deal with it on the next okay our next meeting after. Is All that right. something you can get up to? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Um, any other items not anticipated forty eight hours in advance? No, great. Um, town administrator report. New agenda. Okay. So we're doing well with hiring. Um, all of the positions that were open are now in the interview process. Um, I'm, again, I'm, I am just going to skip down to, to updates, which is in the red. Uh, the new BLS level ambulance has responded to just under a dozen calls since um, that last week in October. I mean, and I'm just under a dozen. What'd you say? Oh, and then the fire department received an AFG grant award for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of new air packs. So Ooh. this is great because this is my capital plan. So. That's great. They came in, so they're here. Yeah. Uh, the ADA plan is substantially complete. Complete. So the consultant, which was hired by PVPC, is Jim Masick. He'll provide an update on the December twentieth select board meeting. Uh, please plan. It, it will be a lengthy, uh, probably a half hour to 45 minutes presentation. It's an important plan that we needed to have in place. So they did a really thorough job. Uh, the Russell School Reuse Feasibility Study, two finalists will be interviewed tomorrow and Friday. So we will 
Um, I, I'll be also checking references as well. I've already started doing that. So we'll have more information on that. Town Hall, right now, I think the weather has kind of, right? It's been weather. Is that waiting for the boards. Wow. Oh, the boards, okay. Okay. And there was the training that I had talked about how to set yourself up for success, right? increasing the efficiency of meetings that took place. I don't know if anybody able to was able to watch it today, but it is going to be recorded. And um, it, it had some really good, it, it is good, some good guidance. I'd already let the boards and committees know about that, the chairs, um, but I'm going to remind everybody tomorrow that there will be a recording. Uh, just an update with the Knights Inn, the supplemental shelter. There, uh, well, there really hasn't been more of an update than you've had that you got from Annie two weeks ago. Uh, there's still, I have not gotten the final that that contract has been signed with the agency that's going to take over as service coordinator, uh, but the National Guard is still there. Uh, Birch Meadow Drive, we do have to hold a hearing uh, for the notice of intent. We're going to do that December 6th. Thank you. You got all those abutters addresses for us. We'll contact the abutters so that they know about it. And um, so that's that's going to be in place, that hearing. And then you guys will also vote on it as well. And just a reminder, the special town election is December 12th at the Senior Center between 12 and 8. And that is all of the updates for right now. All right. <clears throat> um, does anyone have any items for future discussion? They'd like to add on to a meeting? Yeah, I'd okay. still like to talk about public comment period. Mm -hmm. And then also um, somehow, uh, I don't know how to word the, this, but we've, we've got a, we have town property that, uh, abutters are taking advantage of in various places in town and we need to come up with a plan to, mm -hmm. uh, to figure out how to deal with that mm -hmm. okay uh, yep yeah, and um i'd like to have an agenda item where we could all talk about um like communication protocol so we've got the um so we've got the code of conduct and we know okay. like how we're supposed to follow that and everything but then in terms of follow up so if we're directing people you know whether it's to the chair or to carolyn or a department head or something like that just making sure that there's follow-up happening actually happening mm -hmm. um just because you know, i've been hearing from some people where they've they've reached out i've directed them where they should go but then they're saying that they're not getting feedback so maybe we could mm -hmm. you know just talk about that like how we want to Make sure that gets handled. I and certainly let us better. know if they're feeling that they're not getting, we're not providing feedback. I want to make sure that we are and that right. I can yeah, follow. Yeah, sure, because sometimes. So let me know I because I I want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. And do we want to have the discussion at the next meeting or do we want to put it up because that's a long meeting anyway about uh, residential parking passes for town property? I think that can maybe I wait until. I want to see how effective how it that goes. Is. Yeah. yeah. That might yeah. be something for to keep on the radar, but not necessarily for the, well, for the yeah. December sixth is busy. Yeah, yeah it, they're not yeah. gonna be able to park on the streets anyway, come any moment now. <laughs> Pretty no. soon. No, not ready. <laughs> All right. And anything I, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, in the I'm sorry. Painting of the town hall. Let's get that on the agenda for CPA money. Ooh. I mean, you know, if we don't start working on it now. It's not going to be able I will, to. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gary and I have been talking about it. We need to have so, be able to find someone to come in to give us estimates. You have to have, we, we just have no idea. Oh, yeah. Idea. You just can't say you want to write the town hall. Right. you got to have a number there. I know that with CPA. Definitely. <clears throat> okay. Yes, indeed. Anything else? All right. Um, any liaison reports? Uh, the Fire department is, um, We will you be there on the tree lighting that day? So uh, on De November 26th at five, uh, oh, 25th at five o'clock, uh, they're having the tree lighting at the uh, school. Um, and we've been invited by the uh, education uh, committee to participate. They would like to see selectmen and school committee or whoever else there to sing your little hearts out and uh, sing some carols and um, be festive. And Mike, you usually have the fire truck there for donation of um, toys. We light it up and we, uh, we are plugged in. 
toys that toys. night. Okay. All right. Um, announcements. And I have the North Hadley, also the North Hadley Sugar Shack is having their uh, Christmas tree lighting on November 26th. And that is sponsored by the North Hadley Sugar Shack and the Boys Hurt family. So um, up on the bridge and they put the tree in the pond. Um, it's festive and uh, usually I think um, the people that did the lighting and everything for the, the pumpkins for the uh, Halloween did a really nice job up there. Uh, Bill Deaton. Bill, I don't know the name, but it's beautiful. He's whatever they do, Camp, he's from Florence. Oh, we are. Sector. Oh. Sector. Thank you. That's who it is. Okay. Thank you. He was Mary Ellen Sector was a year behind me. Yeah. But anyway, but yep. Okay. Long term issue. So anyway, they're having that at five thirty on the uh, Sunday, the twenty sixth. So okay. they'd love to have everybody come out for that also. How about the police department angel tree? And we have the police department angel tree is being, uh, they'll be looked on the website because they'll let you know when there's an angel that um, you can take and do for a family. You don't have to do everything, but uh, please look on their website to see if you want to uh, do a family or an individual or whoever uh, for Christmas mm -hmm. gifts. Um. The December 12th override is um, just going to expand on that a little bit. It's going to be for the DPW schematics, and uh, it's also going to be for a, a new fire truck. Um, so please come out to vote mm -hmm. on that also. No. I thought it was school lockers. It's lockers. Oh, the lockers. Truck, not yes, the schematics. Not the schematic. We already did the schematics. You got that money. Um, it's for the locker rooms at the school. So those are the two override questions that day from 12 to 8. Uh, and I had one one uh, passing, uh, Patrick Gaynor. He was a graduate of Hopkins Academy um, from North Hadley, and he has two daughters, Carrie Ann and Kelly, um, and several grandchildren. So our condolences to their, his family and friends from the select board on his passing. I think okay. that's all I have. Right. Okay, so I would... Um like to make a motion for the select board to convene uh, an executive session for the following purpose for Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 A, uh, A3, to conduct um, strategy, um, to conduct collective bargaining for the UPSEU Local 424 Unit, MADIV 108, also potential litigation with University of Massachusetts, as well as litigation with HAP Community Housing Services, Inc. versus the Town of Hadley, Western Housing Court Docket Number 19H79CV000509, where an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating positions of the town. So moved. Roll call. Down on the floor. All right. Oh, somebody do roll call. Amy. Yeah. Somebody's Amy. got a question out there. Okay. He's ability to yeah. looking at the reviews. Yeah. The working group is going to be doing that tomorrow and Friday. Okay, because I was told it was going to be awarded tonight. No. We have a, no. We have to. We have to. We have interviewed firms. We had four firms. Two came became very close in our criteria and our ratings. So we are uh, meeting with both of them. Uh, once tomorrow and once Friday. Okay. We haven't scheduled that award date. We have a tentative one. I'd have to look on my on my notes back there, but it's it might have because we've added this uh, a second interview to um, so that that would might change the award date. But I, I don't have that note with me. 
Um, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session, not to reconvene an open session, and that I also state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. Roll call vote, please. Key? Yes. yes. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Heiser? Yes. 